My Years in Waconia by Edith Nagel Isinger. Chapter 7. The Final Chapter. Surgical procedures were mostly appendectomies, herniotomies, colostomies, and thyroidectomies. But those days we kept the patients in bed longer than we do today. We got them up as soon as we could, but the procedures were different then. So many of them today are one-day patients and outpatient service. It was different in those days. Even obstetrical patients were kept in bed for maybe a week before they were let out of bed, which probably was the wrong thing, but that is the way they were treated in those days. Most of the fractures were treated by traction, and if it was a femur, it would be in a baler splint and with traction, and then when the fracture semi-healed, they would be put in a cast, sometimes a body cast, a pelvic cast. For the tibia, they would be in traction until partly healed or the swelling gone and the cast applied. Much of that is not done today. It is open reduction, usually surgical procedures, which were not done much in the early days of the 1940s. Being located in the area of a farming community, there were many farm accidents. There were fractures, severed fingers, all sorts of tragedies. One little boy from Cologne had been kicked by a horse and had taken part of the skull right off. He was brought in one evening around 6 p.m., and I just never dreamed that the little boy would survive, but he did. Today he is an adult, married and with a family of his own. But I will never forget that part of the top of his skull was just removed, and it was kept clean and bandaged, and later a cast applied to the head. He was later transferred to Rochester. The doctor became ill and then was unable to complete the care of this boy, so he was taken to Rochester, where a metal plate was used to cover part of the head. You never would think that a little fellow like that would survive such a blow to the head, but he did. Everything had been going along so well. Then in October of 1953, doctor had a cerebral accident. I just thought our lives were over with at that time. Our dreams were simply shattered. There was nothing we could do. He didn't want to go to the hospital. He stayed at home. His whole right side was paralyzed, so it was just impossible for him to do anything anymore. Here I was, left with a hospital that we had pretty well filled with patients. Thanks to our good friend, Dr. Korchik, who came out every morning and made rounds, we had to run the hospital for a while until we got things organized. It took about a year before things were set up and organized. In the meantime, we employed three doctors around the clock. Dr. Korchik came every morning. That year, we did quite a few surgical procedures. We had a surgeon come out from Minneapolis to do the surgery. But I had doctor at home ill and had to run the hospital. It really was a big worry. It was a very big responsibility to have this handed to me at this time. After a few months, Dr. Stasel from the Idle Hospital came out to help organize the hospital. We knew we had to dispose of it. Effective October 1954, just one year after doctor's cerebral accident, the Waconia Community Hospital Association was formed. The original incorporators were Dr. and myself, Mr. Stasel, Mr. Charles Gramoth, Mr. Lynn Honerbrink, and Mr. Henry Woods of Cologne. The new administrator was Mr. Gustafson. There was nothing to do but leave the area. It was a heartache, a very sad day, the day we disposed of the property. The property included the doctor's residence, the 16-room nurse's home, and the hospital, which was then about 50 beds. That year, 1953 to October 1954, was the worst year of my whole life. I had doctor at home ill, and I couldn't stay at home with him, so I had one of the nurses from the hospital go over and help him with his bath and see that he got his meals. We had a housekeeper, so the meals were cooked and he was able to eat, but he could not come downstairs. He was a patient upstairs, and it took quite a few weeks before he was able to move around at all but he was very insistent on becoming well again. He wanted to get over this so he could probably practice medicine again. I had a man in Waconia who would come and take him for a ride after he was able to get downstairs and get out of the house with assistance. This Mr. Vinkemeyer would drive him around and always had one of the nurses go with him. He enjoyed getting out, and it was good for him to get out of the house in the room where he was confined. That year was such a busy year. He had so much surgery. We had so many patients. The people just kept coming, even they knew Dr. Nagel couldn't help them, but they kept coming. They wanted to stay at home, local area, and they wanted to support the area. 
We had so many things taking place and I worried every day. So often we had emergencies. And so often when I needed a doctor, they were probably out looking for a location to start their own practice. They didn't seem to want to stay in Waconia. They thought they would like a different place. One doctor stayed in Waconia, went into the doctor's office, and really inherited a beautiful medical practice. One evening during a very cold spell, it always seemed like everything happened during the cold weather, a car stopped outside the hospital. A man came running in and said his wife had had a baby in the car. There was no doctor around, so I grabbed my OB pack and went out to the car. The mother was pretty well covered up. I cut the cord and took the baby into the hospital first. Then I had to find a couple of visitors to help carry the mother in. I wrapped her in blankets and carried her in and expressed the placenta after she was in the hospital. When I came home that evening, our home was adjacent to the hospital, doctor said, you had a baby in the car, didn't you? I said, yes, and everything went all right. Both mother and baby are fine. So he was real pleased. Those were the emergencies that came up, and it, it seemed like there was no end. I was very grateful to a nurse living in Victoria, Minnesota. She was a registered nurse who was working for us at the time doctor had a stroke. She was such a help to me, and I depended on her a lot. We knew we must leave. We did have a home there in Waconia, but it would have been very difficult to live right next to the hospital and not be able to go over and work in it. Of course, this had been doctor's dream all his life, and now this dream was shattered. So we just had to look for a new home. He kept looking and looking, and I said, now don't buy anything unless I see it. And he didn't. One day I went with him and, and a couple of friends. We saw this home in Golden Valley, which I liked very much. This friend of ours said, well, of course our money was all tied up in the hospital. We would have to borrow money to buy the house. But this man said, if you like the house, I'll loan you the money and you can have the house. On November 1st, 1954, 19 years to the day when I moved to Waconia, we left that little town with very mixed emotions. We were sad, but I was relieved to think I didn't have to have the responsibility of all those sick people. Not that I wouldn't have done it, but I guess I was just kind of worn out. So that was the end of 19 years in Waconia, a lovely, friendly town that I'd really learned to love. So many wonderful, wonderful people in it. And I still see many of those people. Of course, many are gone now, but I still visit in Waconia and see some of the people I used to work with or who were patients. It is a joy to see them again. Doctor improved rapidly, but not without a lot of exercises and lifting weights and so forth. He became quite active as far as taking care of his garden and was able to drive a car. He was just not able to go back to practice. At that time, he could got, get malpractice insurance, and you wouldn't be able to practice without insurance. He just knew he had to make the best of his life that was left. I went back to the university and enrolled in the College of Medical Science and got my, ma my bachelor's degree with a major in public health and a minor in nursing education. I was employed by Orono School District as their school nurse. It was a very rewarding experience too. I enjoyed working with the children and I stayed on for quite a few years. Doctor passed away in 1963 and I remarried two years later. I have enjoyed my newly acquired family. It was the most beautiful legacy my second husband, Schley Isinger, could have given me. I see them very often. I have two stepdaughters and their husbands and six grandchildren and now a great grandchildren, and I dearly love them all. But I often think of the olden times and all the people out in the dear little town of Waconia. The Nagel Hospital today is the Nightingale Nursing Home. It is a well-constructed, clean structure and is home to a capacity 37 residents from Waconia and neighboring communities. It has a staff of 46 employees. The Nagel Hospital still stands proud, a memorial dedicated to humanitarians. Starting the hospital over the drugstore and building the other hospital really was a dream fulfilled that helped to, to develop the progress of what Waconia is today. <laughs>